Old School Lane Casual Chat is brought to you by Old School Lane, producing various content from blogs, videos, and podcasts discussing about movies, TV shows, video games, and everything else in between since 2011. You can check out the podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio Public, Overcast, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and YouTube. We're associated with Channel Frederator, Manic Expression, The Comic Book Cast, and The Aaron Meta Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a quick little add-on for this episode of Casual Chats, discussing about the Owl House. I am Patricia, and I am here with a very special guest uh, that was originally going to be joining us for the discussion of the Owl House, but uh, due to uh, variant th- various things, due to the fact that she's really busy, she wasn't able to join us. But I am glad that I am here talking about this show with her. You may know her for her reactions, for her art, for her live streams uh we have morgan terry welcome morgan hey everyone yeah sorry i wasn't able to make it uh the other day well that's all right but at least you're here finally (laughs) (laughs) absolutely so for those who are just joining with us the owl house is a 2020 disney channel animated series created by dana terrace who also worked on gravity falls and ducktales uh, the show is about a teenage girl named Luz Nocera who uh, stumbles upon into uh, a magical world known as the Boiling Isles, and she meets up with a witch named Ida Clawhorn, and she learns magic from her because she wants to be a witch just like her favorite um, book character, the great witch Azura. Uh, she goes over to a school uh, to learn how to do magic called Hexide. She meets up with her friends, uh, Willow and Gus. She uh, later on meets up with another girl named Amity, who they have a bit of a rough start, but then they start patching things up and they get a little bit more closer. And also along the way, uh, there is the evil threats of the leader of the main coven, which is the... Uh, Emperor's Coven, known as Emperor Bellows, and there are some sneaky things behind regarding about uh, a you know resurrecting um, a portal um, of the Day of the Awakening for the Titan and wanting to get over to the human realm. So, yeah, I'd like to know from you, Morgan. Uh, how did you first learn about the Owl House? Um, honestly, like as soon as um, Shira and the Princesses of Power had ended, my inbox was getting flooded with people recommending the Owl House because there's like some parallels, um, especially between the Grom episode and Princess Prom, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. Um, But a lot of people were saying like, you have to watch this show, you have to watch it. And I probably got about two or 300 like requests like in total. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll watch it. Wow. Um, Yeah, and um, like they they kept telling me like, um, they kept telling me like there's this this, uh, gay character Amity and so, like, I was like, okay, I'll watch it, fine, because they know how to get me to watch something is to tell me someone gay is in it. Mm. So, um, but yeah, I'm really glad I did because honestly, if people hadn't recommended it to me, I don't think I ever would have heard of the show. Right. Uh, same thing with um, Aaron and I. Somebody, well, I mean, technically we have heard of it, but we never would have been able to watch it had it been not for the fans requesting that we watch it. So, yeah, once again, thank you to all of our listeners who requested that we take a look into the Owl House. And uh, Aaron and I had a great time watching it. We are really looking forward to season two and uh, what all of the uh, mysteries and all of the rev- revelations will be showcased there. I'm actually really curious to find out what's going to happen. Oh yeah, you're in. You're in for a treat. Let me tell you. Oh, were you one of the people who watched the first two episodes in the Paley Center? Yeah. Um. Actually, I had people on Instagram messaging me asking me like, "Hey, do you want access to the new episodes? Like, I have the codes." So like, a bunch of people were sending me like their codes, like just out of the kindness of their hearts, and I was like, "Thank you guys so much." <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But no, let's get started with uh, our discussion of the Owl House. So just like the previous episode, we went over character episodes, moments, and what we predict for season two. So uh, I know you briefly said that your favorite character is Amity, but yeah, why don't you discuss more about her? Amity? um, Well, personally, like I relate a lot to her. Like when I first started off, when I first saw her, I didn't really like her, but I guess that was just Disney doing like their like bad the bad guy to good guy character development. Mm-hmm. Um, because like 
the longer I watched her in the season, the more I loved her and I felt bad about not liking her at first because I realized like the reason she was acting, why she was acting and how like her parents and their like cruelty towards her changed her as a person. And like, I really, um, with Amity a lot, like on that perspective, as well as like having a crush on someone who like, you can't really tell, but you're like a gay disaster in front of, mm. um, um, but I just, I just love her. I love her character. She's just so sweet. Like she gets, like she turns into such a soft person by the end of season one. And like in season two, she still is. And she's just precious. And I just love her. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aaron was talking about the comparisons between Amity and Helga Pataki in which, you know, she comes from a rough upbringing. And then as time goes on, we get to know more about um, her backstory and the fact that the reason why, you know, she acts the way she does is because of Big Bob and Miriam's uh, raising her and completely ignoring her, which is kind of an opposite for Amity in which like they're very controlling on who she could become friends with and, you know, what she can do and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like if you were to combine like, you know, Helga's backstory and then combine it with like a whole bunch of other characters that we've seen over the past 10 years where they just start, you know, developing their uh, softer persona and then they find somebody that they truly love and they can truly trust. And I think that with Amity, uh, it's actually interesting because her development was much faster than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like a, like maybe two or three seasons until we got that uh, persona that we eventually got to see in like the second half of season one because Helga didn't start becoming like that until maybe around season four or five or maybe you know for some extent the jungle movie um and uh you know, so I just thought that that was like okay I like this decision because now we can start building up Amity towards being a more likable character yeah yeah I totally agree like and another thing with like the Helga Pataki reference like her siblings are kind of seen as like the more favorite just because they're not put as much pressure on and they're just kind of left to their own devices. Like it doesn't seem their parents meddle that much in their lives mm -hmm. as they do with Amity. So I felt like there was a similar thing with like how the Patakis favor Olga over Helga. Right. I feel like it's the same with the Blight siblings. Um, but yeah, that was like another comparison I noticed, but I, I like the fact that they didn't like dread out her like mean side too long because I feel like especially with how much is going on in the story. Like with Hey Arnold, there wasn't really like a specific plot to follow. Like it was just like a feel good show for the most part. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I feel like the Owl House focuses so much on like Luce and her adventure that they wouldn't have had the time to really like write that many uh, seasons to make Amity like, um, what is it? Like the enemies to friends trope. Yeah, the frenemy, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, like I said, I'm glad they did it sooner because like, I would have, I would have felt bad. Like if I hated Amity longer than I needed to. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I totally get it. Oh yeah, for sure. And there, there seems to be like a very similar beat for beat with like other characters uh, that we've seen over the course of the past 10 years. Like I didn't notice that for Marceline until like maybe like three or four seasons in where, you know, she started off as like this prankster and then she started developing more of a soft side when she started trusting Finn and Jake and when they could actually allow the relationship with Bubblegum to form and uh, Catcher and Adora is a very similar thing as well. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of parallels between other cartoons, and I really appreciate that about the Owl House. Yeah. So, uh, with characters out of the way, uh, let's talk about episodes. So, what has been your favorite episodes? Oh, that's so hard. Um, you haven't seen it yet, but the second episode of season two is easily my favorite episode so far. Oh, but really? Okay. Yeah. But that as makes... far as season one goes, um, I'd have to say... Uh, Wing it like witches when they're playing Grudgeby. Mm. Uh, just because I love Amity's gay panic moments. And I like how, like, um, like Luz is standing up for Willow against Basha and how Basha kind of gets put in her place. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I really like the the sports parodies and the montages and all that kind of stuff. I thought that those were hilarious too. And yeah, it, and also we get to see like a parallel between both of the side plots with, um, you know, helping um, with Luz helping Willow challenge Basha into a grudgeby match. And we have Lilith 
and Ida going up against each other in a grudge rematch. And uh, the winner would um, have like serious consequences for both of them, whether it be like for loose, you know, being target practice or for Ida, if she lost, then she had to go over to the Emperor's Coven. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I do like the fact that um, Amity was able to help out um, Willow and Luce with the grudge view match because we got to see in understanding Willow and uh, with, uh, with the, with the Grom Fright episode that um, she was able to like lean more towards them as opposed to leaning more towards the popular girls, which I just thought was like really great. Uh-huh. Like, um, uh, shoot, my, I just, I just, my mind went blank. <laughs> um, oh yeah, it's, it's like nice because we like see her like filling through on her promise when she promised like inner Willow that she's not going to let Basha pick on her anymore. And we didn't really see that in Grom because that wasn't really like, it wasn't really addressed at all. But like when we saw her picking on Willow and Wing It Like Witches, like she literally stands up for Basha, like, when are you going to grow up? And literally facing off against her in a grudge bee tournament like it, it was just nice to see her take uh what is what is the word uh keeping her word right uh my favorite episodes and that's really hard to say but uh, i felt when watching the first few episodes i did really enjoy myself but i felt that you know it could be better until i found out from an interview that uh, Dana Terrace was being bombarded by Disney execs to like write it in a certain way like you know don't include um, the fact that Luce is bisexual don't include the whole LGBTQ stuff uh, you know don't make it too scary and all that kind of stuff so I it wasn't until understanding Willa in which they really like loosened up the restrictions and even Dana Terra said that season two was like the season that she fully intend that she fully saw as like where she can fully shine as a writer and as a, a you know, a creator and executive producer. So, uh, yeah, I felt that as soon as Understanding Willow aired, then every episode became just better and better and better. Not to say that the early episodes were bad, but I can definitely see the quality of the show once that second half started airing. Oh, yeah, no, I totally agree. Like, just the plot, like... When I first watched it, like, I didn't see anything wrong with the first episodes, but now, like, when I rewatched season one, like, the first, like, I'd say, like, five or six episodes are kind of dull mm -hmm. until, like, we get more backstory on characters, and, like, you could see Disney slowly, like, lightening up, but part of me also, like, that gets upset about that is I think Disney just sees it as, like, oh, all these other shows that have LGBTQ plus um characters in them are getting so much profit because everyone's watching them so i feel like disney's looking at it from like a monetary perspective which mm. i mean i feel like other companies probably do but it's not really the sole purpose of it yeah it hasn't but... been like nickelodeon didn't do this d didn't uh, include you know characters such as corn asami and luna for monetary reasons uh cartoon network didn't include marceline and bubblegum or ruby and sapphire for monetary reasons yeah it, it didn't feel manipulative it felt like it was genuine yeah yeah it, but i feel like um like, cause like they were so like strict down, like no, no bisexual, homosexual. They started off the Howl House with that. Now they're slowly like lightening up. I don't really think it's, hope, I hope it's part of it's that they just trust Dana Terrence into like, you know, doing it so it's wholesome, but it's not going to upset any of the super like right wing people. Mm -hmm. um, but like, part of me, just like the way Disney has been acting lately I can't help but think it's because they realize how much profit they can make off of this um, by drawing in the LGBTQ plus community by having those types of characters. Um, I don't really know, but I, I am glad that they're slowly um, lifting up and uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> I almost spoiled something. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. You know, it's a, another thing that um, I can uh, see why Disney is doing this as well, uh, you know, with the restrictions of the LGBTQ um, representation is, is something that um, Aaron and I discussed about in Aaron and Patricia, where uh, Russia was threatening to Disney to not release Out, which is the uh, one of the Pixar shorts from the Spark Shorts series, which is about a man who comes out as gay um, to his parents. And Russia was like, oh, you, you better not show this. And I think Russia was also one of the many countries that also removed um, the gay cop from Onward. 
And I believe that there was also some other reasons as well, but that's like partially why Disney is now like slowly dipping their toe into showcasing more of the LGBTQ uh, representation. Although I just find it hilarious that every time that they do include a new character, they always highlight in their articles, Disney introduces first LGBTQ character, even though that they've already introduced like five or six or 12 of them at that point. Yeah, they just haven't acknowledged them like publicly. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that's just weird. Anyway, I didn't know anything about the Russia thing. So that's all yeah. news to me. Yeah, it's. It, it's rough. I, I just find it interesting with um, the way that um, Dana Terrace was able to include some interesting, like, lore into the series and even included, like, you know, searching for clues so that you can be able to know more about what the season is going to bring. Uh, it, it's very akin to, like, Gravity Falls in which, like, if you want to know about, like, what the secret code is, then you get to be able to, like, listen to the intro or watch the scrambled up words at the end credits so you can be able to find out what, um, what uh, Alex Hirsch is trying to, you know, say about each episode or what's going to be coming up. And uh, I just found it interesting that, um, I don't know if you know this, uh, Morgan, but um, if you look at the titles of every episode in the season, and if you take the first letter of, ev of, all, the, of all the titles, you spell out something. In the Owl House or Gravity Falls? No, in, in the Owl House. I'm going to look this shit up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So essentially, if you look up the first letters of all the episode titles, and in season one, it spells out A Witch Loses a True Way. Oh my god, does it really- oh god, I'm scared. <laughs> well, that's for, the, that's for the first season, not for the second season. We don't know what that is yet. So, I mean, I, I don't know if it has anything to do with Ida or with Lilith, but there was another thing that was also revealed um, that is very akin to, like, Gravity Falls. So if you look in the background, there's, like, these letters that, uh, I, I don't know what kind of letters it is. I think it's, like, an old, you know, magic term that they used to use a, bit, a long time ago, but very akin to, like, Gravity Falls. If you put all, if you, like, decode the letters, then it spells something. And... I believe that um, if you like put them all together and you are able to decipher what it is, it also is a second message that is also spelled out, which I thought, I mean, I didn't even know about this until somebody point, you know, posted this on Reddit. It's like, wait a minute, you're trying to tell me that very similar to Gravity Falls, we could actually learn something regarding about what the show was going to be highlighted throughout the entire season. And I just thought to myself, oh man, it's it's very akin to like Gravity Falls in which like, you know, people are just going to like have a whole bunch of theories and questions about like what's uh, what's going to happen. And I just thought, wow, I mean, okay. I mean, I can see your influences in Gravity Falls, Dana. I mean, I get it. Anyway, so if you were to find the, the secret letters in the background and if you're able to decode them with the proper letter, it's it says... Two witches torn apart, now alone. Two hearts of stone, a curse of feathers and mud, a betrayal of blood. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it clearly shows off that it was the relationship between Lilith and Ida. About how Lilith cursed Ida when she was young. And how eventually, you know, there was this huge betrayal. And then finally they, you know, had to come together at the end when Lilith eventually you know, decided to, um, you know, be alongside Ida when she was being petrified. And, I, you know, it's actually interesting. You remember what you were saying earlier about, you know, that um, Amity eventually got, like, a better character development, uh, like, toward, like, the, the first half of season one, when she, like, loosened up her bully persona, then she became a lot more friendlier. A lot of people were hating on Lilith when they first saw her, saying, like, you know, all she wants to do is capture, you know, Ida and bring her over to the, the Emperor's Coven, and then when we found out that she was the one responsible for cursing Ida, and we saw all the struggles that Ida went through when, you know, getting the elixir and trying to uh, calm down her curse, and then eventually when she took Luce hostage, and then you know, it forced Ida to turn into the Owl Beast and then brought her into the Emperor's Coven and to the point in which she was going to be petrified to death. A lot of people felt that uh, Lilith deserved no mercy. Now, what do you think about this? Um, what, see, when I watched the finale, I had very conflicting feelings because by the end of the first, um, by the second to last episode, I, I hated Lilith with a passion 
But then by the end of the final episode of season one, I had such conflicting feelings because I was like, what she did doesn't forgive all the things she did to Ida, but she's like on the step in the right direction, though I don't believe she's completely redeemed herself because she's done a lot more serious things where it's like, we, it's easier for us to forgive characters like Amity because she didn't really do anything that bad. Whereas Lilith literally like cursed her sister and caused her years of torment and um, mental as well as like physical anguish and like social outcast. And it's just like all this, th and she's like trying to clean up her own mistake um, by forcing Ida to join the Emperor's Coven, which it's, pretty clear to see that like he had no intention of curing her ever but she's so blindsided by like her goal I believe mm -hmm. that like she just hopes like that he's just gonna follow through on her on his word and he almost she almost gets Ida killed like I I personally I'm glad like she like stood up for her sister and she like helped them escape and ended up switching sides but like I feel like in season two they're gonna have to like do more to redeem her character like I don't totally hate Lilith like I at the at the second to last episode, I totally hated her. I don't totally hate her anymore. Like, I see she has some redeeming qualities. I just hope they emphasize it more in season two. Mm -hmm. But I can understand the the conflict there. Yeah, sure. I can understand the conflict as well. I don't hate her either, considering that I felt that she really justified herself in, you know, the last two episodes of the series where the only reason why she wanted to capture Ida and bring her over to the Emperor's Coven was to cure her for her curse. She was trying to undo her past mistakes. So mm -hmm. we kind of relate to her in that because I'm sure that a lot of people have felt regret about what they did and they want to be able to right a wrong. I mean, you know, that's how Zuko was in like the third season in which like he, um, you know, he betrayed Uncle Iroh and, you know, all throughout the seasons, he was trying to capture Aang and, you know, his friends. But then he's like trying to redeem himself saying, no, I need to be the one to help Aang. I need to be the one to teach him firebending so he can take down my father. So yeah, I felt that, um, Lilith was I mean yes it was starting off to be really rough admittedly but I felt that over time she was doing the very best for her sister I just mm -hmm. I mean I think she went a little bit too far and too extreme but I can see where she was coming from because the emperor is the most powerful witch in all of the boiling isles so you know who better than to help cure a curse that was at the point uncurable is you know somebody like the emperor and somebody who had so much power and be able to conjure up so much magic i mean he even had those magical items i mean one of which that Luce almost tried to steal which was the hat that can be able to cure all curses so i can see why that lila thought that he would be the one to help her but you know, Emperor Bellows just saw her as a threat. It's like, oh, you know, she's been trying to stay away from our coven for so long. And, you know, she is, you know, cannot fit with our plan. So we have to do away with her. You know, she's too rebellious. And maybe some other people would uh, be influenced by her. Yeah, typical, like, dictator attitude kind of thing. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't hate Lilith. I, I thought that she... Um, I think that she definitely needs, um, you know, more redemption, and I'm hoping that we get that in season two. Yeah, um, there's, there's like, a lot of pure moments. Like, you start to like Lilith a lot more, um, based off the two first episodes, anyway, of the second season, so. Okay. It's promising. <laughs> Sure, sure. Uh, speaking of which, I guess we can go over that. Uh, now, uh, I, I want to know about your predictions for what we're going to see in season two. Um, so I'll just, I'll just like pretty much state what I did in my analysis video before I watched the, the first two episodes of the new season. Um, based off of things that I saw in the trailer, like I tried going frame by frame. And there was a lot that was happening. Um, basically, like, I believe Lilith is going to help Ida and Luz find a way to um, the human realm. And based off of the trailer, Amity is predictive. Uh, blah, 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 sorry, I can't. It's okay. <laughs> can't think, um, predictively, like, she is going to go to the library with Luz, and they're going to go to the most dangerous section of the library, which I'm assuming is, like, the restricted section, and yeah. the reason it probably is restricted is because, like, there's info in there that, like, not everyone should have access to, like, how to access, like, other realms, yeah. um, and 
So I feel like they're going to find something out there. Um, I feel like we're going to learn a lot more about like certain characters and their backstory. Um, we definitely learn a lot more about Amity. Um, who, uh, we, we see the golden guard. That's his, that's his name that they gave him so far. Yeah. Um, that new like spy guy. Right. Um, and he's, he's kind of delightful. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like he's a bad guy, but he's kind of funny. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. And let me see. Um, and there's just like, I feel like there's just going to be like a lot of adventure and like a lot of plot <laughs> and just a lot of conflict and mixed emotions. Um, but yeah, like that's, that's all I could really say because like, I've been, you know, I've watched the first two. So like, I have some idea of where it's going, but I don't want to spoil it for people I haven't watched it yet. So. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Now I feel that, um, from what I, from what I've seen in the trailer and also the promo, the promo that was leaked, uh, uh, that Disney channel leaked a day early that data Terrace had no idea on it. She was not happy with, uh, that, the room that the restricted section that um, Luce and Amity were going to go to, I believe, had some information regarding about like the different realms. And one of them specifically, from what I remember in a line that she said, was trying to find another way that they that Luce can be able to go home into the human realm. So mm -hmm. that's part of it. And I do know that as for backstory, I know that King's backstory is going to be revealed. I'm really interested about what what's going to, you know, what, what they're going to reveal on that. And also uh, the, there was a live stream that happened, uh, you know, a few months before um, season one ended where um, uh, Dana Terrace, Luz Batista and Spencer one did where they were raising money for uh, helping people to vote. And I believe that she revealed um, two, two lies and a truth. And the, uh, one of them was it was the truth that was going to happen in season two and the rest were lies. And she revealed uh, Gus is getting a growth spurt. Hootie leaves the owl house and uh, Camila, Lucy's mom, kicks the crap out of somebody. And from what we've seen in uh, posters and promotional trailers that um, Hootie is going to be leaving the owl house because, you know, they were able to build like a, a portable uh, bird's house and Lilith carries him on her back. So, yes, Hootie is going to be leaving the owl house, which uh, that's going to be an interesting thing and a half. And um, another thing that I do know that we're going to be getting is the, uh, I, I mean, I, from what we've seen in that, 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 um, that trailer, it's like Luce's mom at some point will know that she's not at the normal camp and that she's wandered off somewhere. So I'm curious as to how that, uh, that's going to be tying into this, to the second season. Yeah. Um, I, I had a lot of, um, I, I totally forgot about it until you just mentioned it. I had a lot of comments on my analysis video saying that, like, Luce's mom probably knows something about the Boiling Isles, um, whether it's from the letters. Some people were thinking um, Ida was the one that was writing the letters. Some people think it was the camp itself. That's That yeah. part's still jumbled. But, um, yeah, people are thinking that, like, somehow throughout season two, she either already has knowledge of the Boiling Isles or like she she somehow gains knowledge and like is discovering like that's where Luce must have went or like how can I get her back and so on and so forth. You know um one of the theories that Aaron brought up on the show that I thought would be really really cool but I don't think is gonna happen is there was an animatic online where it revealed that Luce's mom is the great witch Azura. I saw that. Okay, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> that would be so cool, though. Yeah, that would be really cool, and that would like that would be like the biggest plot twist. But uh, that would be that would be a bit of a stretch, considering of what we know about Luce's mom. But yeah, um, you, although one of my friends did uh, make a theory that the Great Azura is real, although um, that would be again very interesting to see what how that turns out. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like a lot of things that I really want to know about in the second season. Like, um, I, I actually made a theory considering that we know that season three is going to be three 45 minute specials and then the series will end after that. I made a theory that everything that's happening, that's happening in, um, the second season is going to conclude and maybe like, you know, Flues finally goes home and then the third season, maybe... 
will be like an opportunity for maybe Dana to kind of like use some sort of uh, semblance of the beta designs and maybe like make it really dark and like, you know, having Luce go back to the Boiling Isles one last time because there's a major threat maybe between the human world and the uh, Boiling Isles. I'm actually, I, I actually think that'd be really cool. Yeah, totally. Um, like, I don't know, like personally, I just feel like she would be happier in the Boiling Isles. Like, I don't know, like it, it, it made me upset. Like when I watched, what was it? I think it was Star vs. Forces of Evil when like Star had to leave Earth and go back to like Muni. Like, I, I don't really, I don't know. I just feel like Luz would be happier in the Boiling Isles because she doesn't have any friends at home. And like, she, she could become a witch. Like, I, I'm kind of hoping like, that's my only concern with like the, like the theory you're talking about. It's just because like, personally, I feel like Luz would be happier. I don't know if her mother would like move to the boiling aisles or like, I don't she I would, don't like, think that she would weekends. or maybe yeah. maybe we can be like a Harry Potter situation in which like maybe she can take her education at Hexide and maybe like around well summertime maybe that she can be able to visit her mom even though that it is summertime in the human world but in in the boiling aisles they're still going to school so I don't know like how time works in the the in you know both the human world and in the boiling aisles I mean Aaron and I were even debating about this like you know how much time has you know how much time does usually pass between like the human world and in the boiling aisles does it go faster does it go slower I mean I think that it's roughly around the same time so we're not worried too much about that. And as for like the seasons, I mean, I don't know. We're still, we're still debating about that one, but yeah, I, I mean, it would be really nice if uh, Luce can be able to like stay in the boiling aisles because, you know, she has her friends there. She could be able to practice magic and she has a mother figure with Ida. So yeah, I'm actually curious about, um, you know, how it would kind of like wrap things up. Now I haven't seen Star versus the forces of evil, so I don't really know about what happens on that show, but from what you tell me, yeah, I think that, um, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I think it'll be really cool if um, she would, you know, stay in the Boiling Isles, even though I think it'll be a little bit rough considering the fact that she's 14. Yeah, but she's kind of mature for her age, like, because I feel like most people her age, like, if they were, you know, faced with the thing she was faced with, they'd probably have a mental breakdown of some sort, mm -hmm. but she just kind of takes it as it is, so I, I don't know. I don't Luz's, know either. This is a tough cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. She is. Uh, yes, I mean, it is true that she can be a bit of a goofball and she can be aloof for a lot of things. But, you know, I mean, who isn't at 14? But yeah, I think, exactly. I, I think that she would do very well. And I think that, um, you know, whatever the decision that, um, you know, Dana Terrace does in, you know, shaping up what the story's going to end up being, I'm sure it'll be a, quite a journey and a, quite an experience. I'm sure regardless, it'll turn out well. Dana Terrence is, seems to be a very talented individual. Yeah, for sure. I don't really have much to say. Uh, do you have any final thoughts regarding about the Owl House? Um, honestly, I'm just, I'm just glad people recommended the show to me because when I heard the, sh the show name, The Owl House, I was like, that's a weird, that's a weird title. Like, I've never... I'm like, what is this show even about? Like, yeah, I, I thought I, I thought it was recommend. It. Yeah, I thought it was recommended. The Loud House. I'm like, wait, I'm already watching The Loud House. It's <laughs> like, no, 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 no. It's The Owl House on Disney. It's like, wait, they're doing a Loud House equivalent on Disney. It's like, no, 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 no. It's The Owl House. I'm like. Okay, and then I looked it up, but then I didn't have time to watch it because I was focusing on other things. And then our listeners recommended it to Aaron and I, and where now we fell in love with it. I know it's so crazy how like you could go from like not even knowing a show exists to like obsessing over it and being like, how did I not like how did I function before this show? <laughs> like it's just it's crazy. Like in like I was still hesitant because like when I first heard the, the title, I'm like, what the hell is it about? Like like a show about like a house with a bunch of owls in it like I was so <laughs> confused and then I was doing a live stream and someone had me watch um an animatic someone made to um I don't know if you've heard the Little Miss Perfect song I you know what um Tim uh from a look at Disney brought it up uh at the podcast I didn't even know what it was until I looked it up and I'm like oh doesn't okay. it sound just like it was made for Amity it does actually <laughs> You know, so it's like, interest. you know, it's like, you know, I, I see like, um, Spotify playlists of like, you know, this is what, uh, you know, these songs are for these characters. And when I listen to it, it's like, okay, I can see some of it fit. Some of it is like, uh, but this one is like, okay, I can see it working for Amity. Yeah. 
yeah i'm literally like how was this song written before amity like <laughs> yeah. it sounds like it was made just for her it, and then like the fact that the creator like didn't even know the show and like she she watched it and she made like a follow-up song at, from Luz's point of view like i thought that was just so awesome yeah, it kind of reminds me of the fan of Avatar The Last Airbender who, uh, when she first saw it, when it was released on Netflix, fell in love with the show so much that she decided to make a musical of it. Really? Yeah. Like, she had never watched the show, so she decided to watch it on Netflix, and then she fell in love with the show so much that she, uh, like, made a musical of it. I think, I think she's on Instagram or something, but I'm like, wow. This is what, like you know, fans, like the really good creative fans can be able to do. And I'm glad that I'm able to see that kind of stuff because, you know, it's a shame that like, there's a lot of like really toxic fans out there to shows and you can't really enjoy it because, you know, the stuff that they say is like really, really negative. But then when you see stuff like this, it's like, you know, people can be like really creative with like the fan art and, you know, like the, the animatics and the fan fiction, which I never really delved too deep into it. Um, but now that I'm seeing like all this, the, the possibilities of like these different storylines and the, the way that the characters are acting is like, yeah, this stuff is awesome. Yeah. Especially like, like being part of so many fandoms throughout the years, like there's something different about the Owl House fandom. People are just so creative and I feel like it has a lot to do with the show just the different routes people can go with art or fan fictions or animatics. And I don't know what it is, but just, it has really talented people in it. Mm -hmm. Like the comics I've seen that fans have done. I'm like, how are you not working for Disney? Or like some of them actually look better than like Disney's drawings. It's like, how? Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like, like there's a lot of talented people in a lot of fandoms, but I feel like the Owl House fandom is like just chock full of talented people that's not to say that there's not like toxic people because there are people that will literally jump down your throat for um not liking a character or shipping two characters or... oh yeah like a, a friend of mine was telling me about that i which some, i didn't even know about until just like recently that people are shipping basha with willow like what yeah boshlo boshlo i don't get it either yeah apparently like the reason people ship that is because they it, it's usually like in fan fictions like basha redeems herself somehow similar to like how amity redeemed herself but obviously basha has a lot more to do because she bullied personally bullied willow for years like and caused like you know harm so i i don't get it personally but i mean i don't know yeah i i don't know either that's that's a weird one but yeah. yeah, anyway, but uh, besides that, but no, I, I mean, I, you know, support the fans out there for doing all of their creative works. And I can't wait to see what season two has to offer because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be showcased over there. New characters, new scenarios. Like, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I couldn't contain my excitement when I heard that it was coming out June 12th. I, ooh, <laughs> it was something else. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, yeah, that should be it uh, for this little, uh, uh, you know, episode 165B of Casual Chats, uh, discussing more about the Owl House. So, uh, Morgan, thank you so much for coming on by. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's uh, good to finally be back. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, please plug and promote your stuff. Uh, if you want, you can follow me on YouTube, uh, just Morgan Terry. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram and see you know owl house fan art and just me being a nerd in general it's morgan terry 1997 um and if you want to follow me on twitter you can at morgan terry 601 i kind of just post repost um owl house things and just all over th fandoms i'm in so it's just it's just nerdy times all around all right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as for me, uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash old school lane, facebook.com slash old school lane. I'm on Twitter at patty underscore B underscore Miranda. You can listen to my podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio Public, m many places. New episodes of my podcast, Casual Chats and Old School Lane Interviews will go there first, and then they'll go up in a few days on YouTube. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, listening, everyone. Uh, let us know in the comments below about the Owl House, and let us know about your favorite characters, moments, uh, episodes. Uh, what are your thoughts are?
are for, uh, you know, second season coming up. Uh, let us know about your uh, anticipation with what the character revelations are going to be or the story or any of the sorts. Uh, let us know about any particular fan art or fan fictions or animatics that you want us to look into. And maybe we'll discuss about it once we do our second season of The Owl House. So that's it. Hope to see you around soon and take care.